Just look at that. So I think just to yank her out of the chair in that way by the wrist is really terrible. <laughs> If patients refuse their medication, they can be physically restrained and forced to take it, but only as a last resort. There's really no reason to do that because she's not resisting in any way, shape or form. From what I've seen, that, that's not justified. They're acting like a gang, not a group of healthcare professionals. They took her down to a room at the end of the corridor and they pulled her into this room. Pulled her down onto the bed. So they maneuvered this patient onto her side. Just hold fire one minute. And the nurse in charge said to me, hold this arm here. Oi, oi, that's enough, bitch. It was the language that was used around this that I just couldn't believe I was hearing, to be honest. As if we choose to see your ass. You know, it's a big thing to do this. It's against any policy I've ever seen about restraint. Restraint is the biggest cause of injury for nursing staff, as well as for patients. And you want to do absolutely everything you can to avoid using restraint, um, because it just causes more harm than good, really, in 99% of the, the circumstances. I'm concerned about the way the man handling yeah. the person. Yeah. Uh, and the lack of dignity around all of this yeah. process. I don't want it! Oh, I fought! I fought! I promise if you shit yourself, you will be clean. It was all just a big game. Um, it wasn't taken seriously. It was fun. That's the impression that I got. It was something that um, happens to break up the day. After injecting Claire, they tell her she'll have to stay in the room for an hour. They locked the door and they opened slats in the glass and they looked through and they were laughing at her. Once they've had their fun, they let her out almost immediately. It's not just mockery, it's excitement. I think there's an element of them getting off on it a bit. And then they call her a cheeky bitch, having sworn at her all the way through. It's a toxic culture, isn't yes. it? It's a really toxic institution. Later, I asked Claire how she feels about being restrained. It's not nice. You don't just go, oh yeah, I'm being restrained, I'll just walk with this person and do what I want them to do. You automatically try to like, get them off you. I hate it. Harley spent the last 17 days in seclusion. She's now been allowed out, but only into the room next door. She's been in and out of hospital over the last 10 years. It's been tough on her family too. We were just very, very close. And that is her prom. A really nice car and a lovely dress and a tiara and a tan and makeup to be done. Unbelievably glamorous yeah. in that photo, isn't she? Oh, I, I had tears. <laughs> I don't always cry all the time, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Before she got a diagnosis, she was self-harming, and then it got kind of worse, and I, I didn't know what to do to help. I didn't have the skills to help her. It's not been a good journey at all, not, um, not, for, not for any of us, really, but especially not for, for Harley. Back in the hospital, I get an urgent call to help with Harley. 
I'm told she's been shouting and verbally abusive. This was like the top brass at this hospital. All of these people I hadn't seen before. They decide Harley has to go back into seclusion. A ward manager suggests asking her. So what we just want someone who's a just to call down and support me and now we just want you to go. Maybe not like before you go on I'm not sure it all do it. Just give it I've seen Harley do what she's asked before, but today that doesn't seem to be an option. They're preparing to use force. We're all in all the managers. Mm -hmm. And the options are all in to get stuck in. So someone just needs to go in and say to her, look, this is what's happening, and get them go. Literally just do it straight away. Yeah. There's no negotiation here. There are at least eight of us as we leave the office. When we get to Harley, she's sat on the floor. She didn't have a chance to have a conversation about it. Maybe if somebody had asked her to get up and go into the room, she might have done it. How's she going to trust anybody, you know, if the people that are supposed to be looking after her in the hospital treat her like that? I'm a bit shaken up by it, to be honest. And like, I, I walked out and um, I had to get on with the rest of my day, but I won't ever forget seeing that. She was a young girl at the end of the day, eight people, and she was calm, and she was even saying, just listen to me, just give me a chance to talk, and they just weren't. If the management have that sort of attitude, then so will the support staff. So it, it starts from the top, really. It shouldn't be happening, and they do need to pay. In fact, Edges need to roll for that. quite horrific, isn't it? I don't think there was any need for that at that moment in time. It's not like she was harming herself or harming other people. It's not a safe restraint, I don't think. It's chaotic. I wasn't there. So all I can say is, if they did decide it was necessary, they didn't do it very well. I mean, my experience is, is these things are always chaotic. It does feel uncoordinated. As soon as they entered the room, unfortunately, they triggered it, so they'd started the escalation of the behaviour. It's funny, like, amongst like, all the awful care that I've seen, every now and then there are little flashes of brilliant care, you know. There are those people in there. A support worker entertaining patients with karaoke. Another doing a patient's hair.
Edenfield, like other hospitals, struggles to recruit enough staff. If I could describe the staff in Edenfield today in one word, that word would be critical. There were several long periods today where I was alone on a ward with pretty kind of unpredictable and vulnerable patients. It's a difficult job and shifts can be really hectic. People leaving is the only way to we need is staff. Before people were leaving, but well, now people are leaving because it's in the fucking state, is it? Staff are suffering, these patients are supposed to be caring for. We can't fucking care for them the way we should be. It's fucking pathetic. Staff say senior management aren't around enough to understand the reality of life on the wards. We are very empty. That's the problem. Our management is down. People above us, above managers, are getting paid a fucking lot of money more. And the place is fucked, it's always in docks. But there's no effort to retain staff. You know, we've got some really good nurses that are dead experienced that are leaving. Rather than sitting down with them and saying, look, we don't know you should because you're really poor and so There's none of that. There's no nurses on the floor right now. Isn't it? Shit show. Panorama's seen a document from inside Greater Manchester Mental Health, the trust that runs Edenfield. It shows there were 58 times over a five-week period when adult secure wards didn't have enough nurses. So nurses from other wards provided cover. We should never have a shift in a secure unit where there isn't a registered nurse on the ward 24-7. And actually, they shouldn't be working on their own. There seems to be huge problems in terms of recruitment of the medical profession. All of those things feed into the culture of a ward. The government says across the NHS in England, there are now over 4,300 more doctors and 10,200 more nurses compared to last year. But almost one in five mental health nursing posts are vacant. Low staffing can help understand some poor behaviour or unprofessional behaviour, but it cannot be the reason for some of the kind of actions that we've seen. It's no excuse for the, the abuse that we've been seeing in the footage. No, no excuse at all. Staff are expected to do regular checks on patients to help keep them safe. They're called OBS. Often they don't happen. All of these patients in this corridor are supposed to be checked on every 15 minutes. I've been sat here for 35 minutes. I will check. OBS should be recorded to ensure patients are being properly monitored and cared for. If something goes wrong and there's an investigation, it's essential this paperwork is accurate. I've seen these records frequently falsified. This is Nurse Brendan on the right. He's telling a support worker to sign for OBS that haven't been done. I think where you start getting into the falsification of clinical records and actually encouraging other members of staff to falsify clinical records, 
you need to start questioning their professional conduct in terms of whether or not they should be a registered nurse or whether or not they need regulating in their practice, i.e. more monitoring of their practice. Then Nurse Brendan asks me to sign to say I've done some ops when he knows I haven't. I'm doing uh, pretending to do ops. Do it, alright. I'm doing five to six. <laughs> ah, wait till six at least. <laughs> to protect my cover, I do what I'm asked. They are pulling in a new member of staff who's not very experienced. By doing that, they're implicating you. So they're making it, um, they're generalizing it to, to all staff, so everyone's involved in this uh, delinquent or corrupt practice. This is Olivia. She's been recording videos from inside the hospital. Olivia's been struggling with her mental health since she was a teenager. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. She's been at Edenfield for nearly four years. What do you think about this place? Well, uh, I like it. In general? I like it. Why? So no one knows what we're doing, we're just experimenting. That's Olivia, is it? Mm. This is Olivia's mum, Diane. She'll take in pictures and selfies. Yeah, and yeah. Me and Olivia, day after Christmas, Boxing Day, we've gone in to look at the sales. Oh, that's a great <laughs> photo. She was a happy, lovely life. She's always smiling. Um, well, I used to take her to work with me all the time um, when she was off school, so she wouldn't sit at home on her own, stuff like that. I used to take her with me, she'd be sat in the big posh houses with a big box of chocolates and laughing at me cleaning. <laughs> As she got older, Olivia began self-harming and tried to take her own life. She stops eating and drinking. Um, because she thinks she was fat. Um, she's jumped off a bridge twice. Is she getting better? No. In fact, I think she's getting worse. Olivia believes the way she's being treated isn't helping. How does staff make it worse, do you reckon? Yeah, I'll look you. What kind of thing? What do you mean? You fat cunt. Oh, I'm not joking. No, you know, it's not funny. It's not a joke. Stupid. Shit like that. Piss me off. How often does that happen? All the time. I don't know why they're working there, it's absolutely disgusting because they can't... How oh, can they say something like that to a patron? I see for myself how staff talk about Olivia. Yeah, she'd tell everybody that. Oh, you won't be able to cry. 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 Diane says she's complained to the hospital. What do staff tell you? Staff just basically put it on Olivia, like, oh, it's just Olivia, she's on one today, um, it's just Olivia, the way she is. And then obviously I believe that, do you know what I mean? And 
It's just really sad. Really sad. Harley's still in seclusion and doesn't know when she'll be let out. She's not the only one. During my time undercover, I see 10 patients held in these seclusion rooms, many for weeks on end. Some of the rooms are in a terrible state. You can see the corners of the room are sort of damp and the paint's peeling off. The patients in seclusion can't even crack a window. It's the height of the summer. It's sticky. They don't have any fresh air. That's got to be tough, particularly the ones that smell like sewage. Yeah, it's just a deeply, deeply unpleasant place to be. How can you put people who've got a great internal disturbance in a horrible environment and think it's going to make them better? These rooms appear totally untherapeutic. Yeah. The state of decay among, yeah. uh, with them is just awful. The government says the use of force, including seclusion, must always be used proportionately, in accordance with the law, and only ever as a last resort. But over the last four years, the number of seclusions recorded by hospitals in England has almost doubled, from nearly 8,000 to just over 14,000. Harley should only be kept in seclusion if she poses an immediate risk to others. Nurse Sarah says staff want to keep her in there for a different reason. She's still in seclusion. I just said to the ward manager, I said, please, 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 do not let her out because the staff need a break. As bad as that sounds, they need a break from her. Um, and, and then, from what I can gather, the staff have basically said, if you let her out, I, I won't put them on the ward. <laughs> that can't be the basis of seclusion. You're depriving somebody of their uh, liberty. You cannot deprive somebody of their liberties because staff are fed up with her. It feels like she's stuck there and they've got no other plan apart from to keep her locked up for days on end. That is totally against any kind of policy with regard to seclusion. Seclusion should never be used as a punishment. It's now been decided that nearly all of Harley's possessions should be taken away from her. If she wants food, drinks, or even toilet paper, staff must bring them to her. Nurse Emma's being briefed. She's got a duvet and pillow in her dressing gown. Love it. <laughs> so if she asks for bedding, can we give her bedding? No, she's no. not to have anything. She's not to have anything. That's good. That's fine. I'm not arsed. She's getting for a whole lot of She's had all of her possessions taken away from her. All that she has to do all day is sit and, uh, and think. If she asks for something, it might take an hour for that thing to be brought to her and she sees that as, as deliberate and maybe it is sometimes. It's what you do to a child as well. If your child is naughty as a form of punishment, you'd take away their favourite toy or you'd put them in time out for a few minutes as a punishment. The way the nurses are speaking yeah. about her and the tone that's coming across feels punitive to me. It feels like she's being punished because she's back in the seclusion room. She's become alienated from the staff um, on the ward and that's quite a high risk place to be. That on top of a pretty toxic culture is a real recipe for disaster. Harley's never been convicted of a crime, but Nurse Emma thinks she deserves to be punished. Send her to prison. She'll soon be put under a peg or two. They'll, they'll take none of that caper. Definitely not. And you know what? That's forgive me, but that's what she needs—a good thrashing. But when Emma goes to see Harley, she's quite different. Do you mean it all? Yeah, I do. 
I mean, we've had our differences, but I do feel free. This moment might feel genuine to Harley, but she spent most of the last month utterly miserable in seclusion. It's punishment, torture, and it's wrong. But she's artistic and poorly at the end of the day, not a criminal. So she's in hospital to be treated and to get better. Everything that she has said to us, what's happened, is right, because it's all there in that video. I am there on the case, so I will defend her till the end of time. After three months undercover, working on seven different wards, I'm leaving Edenfield for the last time. It was weirdly emotional walking out of that place. But I know who the heroes of the story are. And that's the patients really, like, they're tough, like, a lot of these guys are tough. What's going on there at this hospital at the moment, by and large, it's not working and is often actively cruel. It doesn't feel safe. I think you're quite clearly seeing toxic staff and I think there's an awful lot of hostility towards patients across all of the wards, which is really concerning. You know, the task of the hospital is the treatment of patients to promote recovery. That's the principal task. Well, that task I think is being undermined by a toxic culture with dynamics of corruption, perversion, aggression, hostility, lack of boundaries. The trust that runs Edenfield, Greater Manchester Mental Health, says it takes Panorama's allegations very seriously, has put in place immediate actions to protect patient safety, and has suspended a number of staff pending further investigations. It says it's undertaken clinical reviews of the patients affected, commissioned an independent review, and is working closely with local and national partners to ensure the safety of Edenfield services. It says it owes it to patients, their families and carers, the public and staff, that these allegations are fully investigated. The regulator, the Care Quality Commission, which had previously rated the Edenfield Centre as good, says it's currently suspended that rating and is reviewing the information provided by Panorama. It says it will determine if any further action is required. NHS England says the allegations in this programme are shocking and completely unacceptable, and it's committed to leaving no stone unturned in ensuring that mental health patients receive safe care. The government says its first priority is to ensure patients receive safe, high-quality care and that they're looked after with dignity and respect. Greater Manchester Police says it's now opened a criminal investigation. Olivia is still at Edenfield. Supported by her family, she's given her consent to appear in this programme. Yeah, this place made me well. In what way? Everywhere. Completely well. Harley's now been moved to another hospital. She and her family have also given consent for her to appear in the program. It feels like the walls are closing in, my chest is closing in on me. I feel stuck. I don't know what to do. I've seen how one of the NHS's biggest mental health hospitals treats some of its most vulnerable patients. They often don't have a voice, struggle to be believed.